On today's episode of Homeworthy, we're taking you to a small seaside village just outside of Dublin, Ireland, where you'll meet interior designer Susie McAdam, who transformed this Victorian house from the 1860s into a contemporary home for her family. The project took more than three years and it's spectacular. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi Homeworthy, I'm Susie and welcome to my Victorian home by the sea in Dublin, Ireland. Hi, I'm Susie McAdam and we're in my Dublin home. It's in Sandy Cove, a little village by the seaside south of the city. I'm an interior designer and I'm founder of Susie McAdam Design. It's a practice based in Monkstown in Dublin. So I live in Sandy Cove. It's a small seaside town just south of Dublin City. It was actually made famous by Ulysses, uh, the book by James Joyce, and it was immortalized in that. So it has a very literary history as well as being a real coastal seaside town. So we looked at this home about seven years ago and um, what really drew me to it was that it was a double fronted Victorian. So in Dublin you have a lot of Victorian properties, you know, from around 1850. Um, but a lot of the time they're kind of these single fronted, which means a lot of the spaces are narrower. And what I loved about this is that um, on the first floor you have this double fronted aspect, which is south facing, but to the rear there was a sea view. And I suppose I grew up in uh, the west of Ireland uh, in Limerick, which is very much more countryside and so for me to have a sea view was something I'd always dreamt about and um, so when I walked in the door and I got that glimpse of the sea and um, I was really sold. Uh, what was really interesting was that the house even though it had the sea view and um, I think in the late 60s they'd built a really bad extension on the home and um, that blocked a lot of that. So our intention even when we bought it very early on um, I knew there was potential to really transform it and to create something that maximised the view and the southern light to the front. And this is the drawing room, which is definitely my favourite room in the house. I think because it contains a collection of pieces that I've hunted for and, and brought over many, many years. Um, a case in point, I suppose, is this painting. I actually bought it with the money I got from my 18th birthday, uh, which I think is kind of an unusual thing to do <laughs> for an 18 year old. But I think it probably shows that from a very young age, I've always just loved art and um, interesting, unusual pieces. And I suppose I've made a career out of that. Um, and the room also holds a few very special pieces that I've coveted for a really long time. Um, probably the most dramatic being this Pink Mirror by Poltronova. It's become a bit of an iconic design moment. Um, but what's actually quite special is that pink hue. So in the evening time, it can set a really nice atmosphere in this room. This sofa is actually a find I got in an auction. So it only cost me 50 euro. And um, it was in pretty bad nick, but I really like the shape of it. And I think it's kind of very much um, my approach to design in a single piece of furniture in that it's a little rough and not perfect, but the fabric really makes it. And it's a juxtaposition between this kind of old piece with a super contemporary fabric, which is by a Belgian designer called JP de Meyer. And I just love the detail in it. You have Egyptian eyes and owl eyes, um, and it's such a dynamic piece, I think, in the room. Um, but again, I love the kind of gold and this probably picks up. This is actually a family um, heirloom that my mom had and it was something she very kindly um, offered to me when we got this house. Um, and that was one thing I really wanted to do because I, I suppose love art and have been collecting it. Um, but I love the contrast of that, which is very classical painting with a contemporary piece by an Irish artist and then an Italian 1980s uh, table lamp. And again, the playfulness, I think, just sits perfectly in this room. So the home currently, we live um, myself, my husband, I have two young babies, family around. I love to entertain and I love to cook. And um, so we love to have family over to gather. Obviously, we, we weren't able to do that for a couple of years. So it, it's something that we've really enjoyed and cherished doing now is to have have those moments together. And again, the kind of different atmospheres, that's something I always like to bring into interior design. So, you know, the drawing room is a bit more, we sit down and have a cocktail maybe with friends. And then the more relaxed living room is our kind of family 
space, Sunday dinners. I think that's really important in interior design is to have areas that can adjust and adapt to the different moments you might be having and the entertaining as well. And just off the drawing room, we have our dining room and um, the focal point being our bar. And I designed it to actually create a glazing so that again, on a nice day, you can actually see see the sea while you're sitting down and having dinner or shaking yourself a cocktail. And we have a his and her section. So I'm quite into gin. So I have my gin area and then my husband's quite into whiskey. Um, and these lights, I actually was in Italy and I fell in love with them, but I only had my handbag because uh, I just had hand luggage. So I had to squeeze them in. So they actually came home in my handbag with me. And the wallpaper here is very special. It's by Watts of Westminster and it's based on a Georgian design. And I love that you can almost see where the paper was like peeled back. And this other little fun piece is by uh, Ratsangan. And again, I love this idea of like the disco ball melting along with my disco dogs and the piano. Um, it's, I suppose, trying to create a party atmosphere in quite a dramatic, more formal room. So when we first walked in the door, um, I think the home had been done maybe in the early 2000s, where they had just painted everything a very dark gray. And whilst it was, you know, very pleasant, I just felt it needed a lot of love. Um, the kitchen was very dark. All of the bathrooms were, you know, really low ceilinged. Um, and I, I felt, especially for me, because, and today is a perfect example, it's a very gray day and Ireland can be very wet and rainy. It's what we're kind of famous for. Um, so for me, I felt actually grey just isn't appropriate for where I want to live. I wanted something colourful. I wanted something that would really lift me and, and bring something fun to my family. We, we spent about three years <laughs> renovating and it was quite challenging because my husband um, was in the UN at the time, so he was abroad. And so I kind of had to manage it a lot as well as running a studio. Um, but when we finally did it, it was in, uh, we finished it just before Christmas of 2019. And then as you, everyone knows, COVID uh, hit in 2020. So I felt really lucky with the timing that we were able to move in just before kind of lockdown happened in Ireland, which was very strict. Um, but we had this space where we had a view of the sea. We had these rooms filled with a collection that I had been building up for nearly a decade and um, so it felt I felt even though it was a very hard process to get it totally renovated and um, I felt really happy to be able to have a place to kind of cocoon in during all that time. And now I'm going to take you through to the kitchen. This is originally our bedroom in the house but we removed the ceiling, added these two huge roof lights and it allowed uh, the southern light to come through. So even on a day like today, which is very stormy and very grey, you can see there's a huge amount of natural light. Um, I chose this totally oversized island, but we prep food here, we have parties here, and it works as like a social space, but also a prep space. I've always wanted a Lacrenieu range and it was probably one of the first things I bought actually before we even started the renovation um, and I chose this Provence Blue which is a colour that I've used in other details in the house such as the spindles and the staircase and the floor tiles so it's a little trick I like to use to bring in a colour in different references throughout a home. I created this curved shelf in the marble and it works really well because it gives you an opportunity then to place some of your favourite objects artwork, flowers, and to bring a softness for a kitchen, which can often be kind of filled with cabinetry and hard surfaces. Um, and one of my favorite pieces is this unicorn that I bought at the Click Encore, this vintage market in Paris. Um, and I saw also in Paris, these uh, wall sconces, which are by a company called Magic Circus. And they're inspired by the metro stations you see in Paris and those Art Nouveau's um, designs and metalwork. Um, but I love to use um, individual hardware, particularly in a kitchen. I think it's an opportunity to have a little bit of fun. So I've gone for these Jaguars and then these Art Deco details on the pull drawers. This project was a real uh, labour of love. It was, it gave me a new opportunity and I think an understanding of how intense the kind of renovation and, and design project can be on you personally, because even though I do it for a living, it's very different when it's your own money and your own time that you're investing. So I think it's given me a really good understanding of the pressure that clients are under and also the detail because it's a you know it's a nearly 200 year old property and um, I really understand how to you know treat it carefully you know areas to restore and to protect and um, so it's it's I think it's really given me um, a knowledge in in that side of design as well. 
And a not super glam but necessary addition is the stair gates because I have two very young kids running around and we're on the first floor level. This is probably one of my favorite pieces. It's a Burl 1960s cabinet and I got WhatsApp a photo of it when I was on holidays and I was so committed I had to try and find Wi-Fi and, and uh, send the dealer uh, <laughs> some funds. But that's my commitment when I see a piece that I really love. And on a normal day, there's really spectacular views of Dublin Bay. But today, unfortunately, it's very stormy. But even, you know, I suppose for me, I even like seeing the waves, the crashing against the pier. And there's something kind of magical about that as well. And um, what works really well is that we've created this kind of hidden storage and window seat. And um, it's great because all of our kids toys are hidden away. And, you know, in the evening time when myself and my husband sit here, it's it's all concealed. But during the day, you know, they're they're playing beside us. We like to kind of cook dinner and be watching them. So it's a very practical space in that it's concealed, but it's very dynamic as well, that everything is accessible. And um, I love this idea of having the kind of arts and crafts table up here as well versus separated from us. And even the idea of like a small dining table, this is, you know, our family space. Um, I wanted it to feel cozy and inviting. And, you know, it's just for the four of us. So it feels to me appropriate to have a small dining table for, for us. I set up my design practice about 10 years ago. I'd worked in the US for a little bit and I came home and I just felt I really wanted to creatively have an opportunity to put my own stamp on different projects. And I felt very lucky. I landed some clients quite early on and was able to, again, I think because um, throughout my life, I've always been drawn to antiques and antique hunting and art, that it was maybe an angle that um, a lot of interior designers in Ireland at the time weren't focusing on. I think stylistically, maybe 10, 15 years ago, it was all about modernity and very sleek contemporary spaces, which I still am, love and I'm drawn to because of my history as um, studying architecture as well. Um, but I think there was a kind of eclecticism and a more curated feel that I brought to projects that, that I suppose allowed me to take on more work and more design projects through my career. And this is the primary bedroom. And the aim here was to create something. You can see it's a really stormy, cold day out there. So I wanted to have something very cozy. The idea of the canopy is that it gives almost like a cocoon feeling. And I absolutely adored this fabric. It was something I wanted to use for a really long time. It's by Dadar and it's called Electric Dreams. So it's kind of a take on a schnozery, which is a detail that I always love. But in my design projects and something I wanted to do here is this idea of mixing, you know, something more delicate, which is the chinoiserie print with the, then a kind of a more chunky geometric fabric. And I lined the Daydar then with a silk stripe by Pierre Frey. And we did this kind of Dutch style velvet headboard um, and the little Samuel and Son trim. And I just love that palette. And um, I was kind of inspired by um, Sophia Capella's Marie Antoinette film. So this kind of soft palette was something I wanted to bring right through in this, in the, in the main bedroom. And we brought that detail through then of the box pleat in the curtains as well. And over here, this is one of my favorite pieces. Um, Again, I do a lot of sourcing in Paris, and I came across this came and I came across this company called Maison Dada, and I just loved. It was kind of a take on an Art Deco dressing table, um, and it's a great, I suppose, place where you know I can get away from being busy mom and and working and everything, and maybe take a few minutes to get ready before work or if I have an evening out. Um, and there's a few really personal pieces. I like to keep my more personal items maybe in the bedroom. This is a painting of my first dog that I absolutely loved called Solo and a family friend of ours painted that. But it was really interesting, even though I've had this for maybe 20 years, um, the palette I thought was just almost uncanny how it's like taking in all the coloration from the fabrics that I chose here. Um, the lighting, again, I sourced these um, in Milan in a vintage uh, dealer and they had been in storage for a really long time. So I was a little bit worried when I took them out of storage that one of them could have cracked because I absolutely loved the kind of soft pink of the, of the glass. And I used the same dealer then for this vintage pink. I think this is 1960s pendant. Um, 
But my love of kind of antiques and collecting started actually with my great great grandmother and she had um, a kind of country house that I used to visit a lot as a child and she was really sweet and kind and she would give me pieces and um, so I this is hers this is like an old antique silver Irish silver mirror and a jewellery box so I think from an early age I've always loved finding these little gems and the Japanese dolls are actually a gift from my dad um, and it's something that I've always been inspired by Asian design and you can see that in some of the chinoiserie prints and some of the screen prints as well that I have in the drawing room. So I like to keep a lot of my very personal items in the bedroom and one piece I adore is this artwork by Aaron Slim so it's a photograph from the 1960s and I don't get breakfast in bed often but I like to place as many hints as possible throughout the house and I love that she's reading the newspaper with her monocle and um, yeah I just think it's kind of fun and it's a, a moment I would like to maybe create at some point in my life. <laughs> I think what I love about this home is it had the opportunity to have these more formal dramatic rooms as well as the more casual living um, and my lifestyle has changed so when we moved into the house in 2019 you know it was myself and my husband and since that we've had two babies so the home has kind of had to evolve um, with our growing family but it's it, I think it's really given shape and depth to the home. So we've lived here for over seven years now and we've actually just sold our home. Um, so I think I we designed it thinking it would be our forever home, but I suppose as things happen, we had children and we decided maybe to have somewhere with a slightly bigger garden. We adore the area. As I said, the people are so kind here. We're right beside the sea and we have a lovely little village that's full of, you know, amazing fish, uh, fish shops and organic vegetables. And so we have that village lifestyle that we didn't want to leave. So we're only moving about 500 meters away. And that leads us to the primary bathroom, which I think is the room people love about this house. This actually used to be originally the kitchen. When we were doing the reconfiguration, it felt really natural to kind of create this double doors and this huge um, main suite in the house. I fell in love, I suppose the starting point was this Philip Jeffries wallpaper. I like that it almost felt woven or embroidered and the palette of the background, which is the soft kind of peachy tones. Um, and I work a lot with a marble and stone dealer in Wicklow, uh, not too far away from here. And they had this incredible peach onyx. So I had this light bulb moment of, okay, this is going to be, you know, perfect together. So I, I had to have it basically. Um, and we use that in the double vanity, either side of the fireplace and then the shower, which I feel is probably one of the most special showers in, in Ireland because <laughs> we have this really dramatic custom brass uh, fittings that I had made um, in Italy and the same as the, the bath. And this bath actually weighs one tonne. And it was, uh, let's say, a, quite an ordeal to get it in. Um, but I just thought there was something really special about the weightiness of it. Um, and because we're close to the sea, I quite like uh, to go swimming and we do a right up until winter. So there's nothing quite like being first swim in the depths of winter in the Irish Sea and then having a bath um, with the marble getting really warm. And then we put in the fireplace as well. So we're able to kind of, you know, you transform. It's very like a ritual after you go swimming in the sea. So this is the perfect place to escape all the mayhem from upstairs and to unwind after a busy day in the studio. I can have my Cleopatra moment in the marble bath and sit by the fire and unwind. And that's the master bathroom. I think in Ireland we're just naturally friendly. I've, as I've travelled, um, I think we're just quite a polite, kind of softly spoken nation. And um, I do really cherish that and love that. And um, it's something that is is very unique. And there's there's kind of a a, a gentleness that it's very hard to to place. I think you know you can walk by the street and people mightn't jump at you but they'll always kind of give you a gentle smile um, you know a soft wave and there's something about that it's it's not too in your face but it's also very comforting that kind of uh, you you understand that people are looking out for you and even you know I always feel like people will always let you walk on the street you know if you have a buggy they, they'll let you walk they'll open the door for you I think we're just naturally um, caring and kind of a soft natured nation. I think for my own home, it was a really nice opportunity for me to be maybe more playful, more experimental. And, um, you know, when I work with clients, I'm really trying to 
um, you know, create their vision, bring their ideas and elevate them and create something very personal. But for this home, you know, it was it was my space or my canvas to to really explore different things. And, um, you know, for my design practice, we spend a huge amount of time sourcing abroad in Paris and Milan and London um, and going to a lot of vintage markets in person and then obviously online and that during COVID. And um, so I've been kind of collecting pieces for a really long time. So I felt it was almost based on, you know, finding these different pieces of art and furniture and building schemes around that. So particularly in this in this room, even the chair I'm sitting on, um, there was an auction house across the road that I would go to every week and there might be, you know, 200 pieces in this auction, but there was always one gem and I'd always try and find that gem, capture it. It might only be, you know, it doesn't have to be expensive for me. It's more about the shape of the piece, the silhouette and, um, you know, how striking it is and give it new life, you know. So that's something I've done for a lot of pieces in this house. And I think that's what makes it very unique and very personal. And this is the nursery. So it actually took me an age to decide on the wallpaper for this room, but I finally locked down this really dramatic paper by Pierre Frey. Um, I think it was originally printed in the 80s and because maybe I'm an 80s kid, that's why it appealed. One thing that I think is so important in a nursery is to have a super comfy, uh, really wide chair because I love to sit here in the evening with my kids and probably spend about an hour here each day reading stories. So to have something that you can put the feet up and get really comfy is, is super important. Um, another detail, I think because the height in this room, it allowed me to be choose something that's quite overscaled. So we picked this elephant and giraffe from Jonathan Adler. And I think, again, they add something really strong to the room. And creativity is something that's really important to me and something I want to bring down to my kids. So um, the pendant is quite special. It's designed by Ingo Meyer and it's literally like ideas flying around the room with little wings. So I thought it was a perfect addition to this room. And that's the nursery. For me, home is really a sanctuary. You know, I work incredibly hard and so does my husband. So to have a space that we can come home to, um, you know, surrounded by things that really make us joyful, I think that's, that, that is what makes a home. Um, I love art. I love things that are colorful, dramatic. And um, I just would hate to live in a space that is kind of empty and sparse and, you know, devoid of any personality. So for me, it's a combination of being surrounded by things that you adore and that are really joyful, um, as well as having that space to enjoy with your family. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.